Visiting the doctor. When people feel sick, they go to a doctor. But sometimes people visit the doctor even when they are not sick. Doctors can perform a medical checkup to find out if a person is healthy. By performing this physical examination, the doctor can identify any health problems that might be developing. During a checkup, the doctor examines your eyes, ears, and throat. The doctor uses a small flashlight to examine the eyes, ears, and throat. It is important to make sure that the eyes react normally to changes in light. It is also important to make sure that the ears and throat have a normal appearance. When the doctor examines your throat, he or she will ask you to open your mouth wide and say, Ah! The doctor uses a stethoscope to examine the patient's heartbeat. The stethoscope hangs around the doctor's neck. By using a stethoscope, a doctor can hear the patient's heartbeat very clearly. While checking the patient's heart, the doctor also listens carefully to make sure that the patient's breathing is normal. The doctor also checks the patient's blood pressure. Blood pressure is measured by placing a cuff around the arm. Air is then pumped into the cuff, and this allows blood pressure to be measured. Having very high blood pressure or very low blood pressure is not good for one's health. It is better to be in between. Another part of the examination is a test of the reflexes. The doctor tests the patient's reflexes by gently hitting his or her knee with a small hammer. If a person has normal reflexes, the leg will extend suddenly. Sometimes a doctor may give injections using a needle as an extra part of the checkup. These injections, called vaccinations, prevent the patient from developing certain illnesses. Medical checkups can help to maintain health. But people should also maintain their health by leading a healthy lifestyle. A small town. I grew up in a small town. There were only about 2,000 people who lived in the town where I grew up. When a town is very small, it is also called a village. My village was surrounded by many farms and many lakes. The house where my family lived was near the middle of the town. On the streets where we lived, most of the houses were similar in size, but many of them had different shapes and different colors. Each house was surrounded by a yard where people grew their lawn and their garden. Often, I would walk from my house to the downtown part of the village. Downtown is the area where the stores and shops of a town are located. Because I lived in a small town, it was a short walk to the downtown area. Along the main street, there are several different kinds of stores. Some stores sold food, some stores sold clothing, and some stores sold hardware or building supplies. It was also a short walk to the schools in my town. When I went to elementary school, it would take about 10 minutes to walk to the school. Some of my friends lived on the same street where I lived. Sometimes we walked to school together. During the summer months, many people came from the big city to visit our village. The people liked to get away from the busy streets of the city. They enjoyed the quietness and the slow pace of village life. They also liked to spend their vacations near the lakes that were near the village. People from the city often said that people who live in villages seem very friendly. When I grew up, I left my village and I went to work in a larger town. But sometimes I like to go back and visit the place where I grew up. Personal Computers during the 1980s and 1990s, personal computers became very widespread. The use of the computer has changed people's lifestyles in several ways. Before 1980, hardly anyone owned a computer. Only governments and large companies had computers. But throughout the 1980s and 1990s, computers became much cheaper, faster, and smaller, and they held much more memory. More and more people were able to afford to buy a computer. By the year 2000, computers had become very common. 
For many people, the personal computer is used mainly for performing calculations and for word processing. For example, people can calculate their finances on the computer. They can also use the computer to type their written documents, such as essays or letters. Many people enjoy playing games on their computers. Some people like to play chess or checkers on their computer. Other people prefer games that require fast reflexes and fine coordination. Computer games were very simple during the early days of the 1980s. Today's computer games show detailed images and sounds. Another very popular use of computers involves communication. Many people keep in touch with their friends and relatives by using electronic mail or email. Email allows people to send letters instantly to people far away. It is even possible to attach pictures to one's email messages. Many people also like to use their computer to gain information on the internet. The internet is a vast network of electronic pages where people can find information on many different topics. For example, people can read newspapers and magazines on the internet. Personal computers have only existed for a short time, but for many people, those computers have quickly become a very useful part of everyday life. The Middle Child. I am the middle child of the family. I think it is nice in some ways. I have an older sister from whom I can borrow clothes from if she lets me. I get to meet my older sister's friends, although sometimes they think that I am too young to be with them. I have a younger brother. He is cute, but sometimes I have to babysit him. There are good things and bad things about being the middle child. My sister is the eldest child. She was the first child, so she spent time alone with my parents. She got lots of attention when she was first born. They took lots and lots of pictures of her. All her clothes and toys were brand new. I got her hand-me-downs. My parents were the strictest with her. They had lots of rules for her to follow. She is the first child, so they want her to be perfect. My younger brother is the baby of the family. I think that we all spoil him. We let him get away with some things that he shouldn't get away with. His room is always messy, and my mother never gets mad about that. She gets upset with me if my room is messy. She tells me that I'm old enough to keep a nice, clean room. It's no good thinking about which position you would like to hold in the family. You really don't have a choice about that. I think I like being the middle child. I can relate to my older sister and my younger brother. Yes, I think the middle is probably a good place to be. Advice to a student from a foreign country. My advice to a student from a foreign country would be to talk, 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 talk as much as you can to the people who live in the place that you are visiting. Talk to them and practice your new language skills. Learn all the funny sayings and different words that make up their language. Talking is the only way to really learn a language. Listen to people, and talk to people. If you talk to people, you will also learn about their culture. I have a friend from Japan. His name is Nori. He often comes to see me just so that he can practice his English. He gets confused about words that sound the same but mean different things. He was asking me about the words "see" and "see." I explained to him that they do sound the same, but they are spelled differently, and they mean different things. Nori is learning some of our funny sayings from different people. One morning, I asked him how he was, and he said, "Alive and kicking." Another morning, when I asked him how he was, he said, "So so." He laughs about these strange sayings that we use. 
He is learning English quickly because he spends a lot of time with English-speaking people. He likes to have lunch with my friends and me because we ask him questions about his homeland, and he answers us in English. If he doesn't understand our questions, we spend time explaining what we mean to him. He says that he enjoys being here. He thinks that the people are very friendly. We enjoy speaking to him and helping him to learn English. We also enjoy learning about his country. It is enjoyable for us to meet new people and learn about new things.